I know. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Um, I'm just talking away without uh, my mic on. That could be a problem. I'm so glad you're here. I am Pastor Kate with Root Bible. Let's see if we can switch to that for you. With our new layout, my husband's always like, you can figure it out. I'm like That is easy to say. Easy for him to say, I should say. I'm Pastor Kate. I'm with Root Bible. And if you haven't checked out Root Bible yet, you have um, kids in your home of any age. Or uh, you're attending church, but you have some questions. You want to go deeper with uh, certain subjects in your home. You need to check it out. It's completely free. Enjoy the birds. Those are free also. Uh this is really the resource that the Lord has led us to provide so that people can grow between Sundays in Him and really experience what we're going to talk about today and what we're making available in our new class coming up, the Holy Spirit Reboot. So you've got to check all of those things out. Again, that's at rootbible.com. All right, I'm going to go fast today because I've been going a little long with announcements, and I apologize. So we're just going to get right into where we left off on the previous podcast, which was talking about gross ingredients that the Bible tells us to get out of our lives. Um, and we discussed that last time, so I'll just hit on it, and then we'll move into how. That's the biggest thing is sometimes you feel like you find out what you need to do, but perhaps you're missing the how do I do it. And that can be a big deal, right? Sorry if I was too loud there for you. I'm learning the new mic setup. So let's get green circles up. Here we go. All right. So last podcast, we left off with our scripture, 1 Peter 2, 1. So then rid yourselves of all evil, all lying, hypocrisy, jealousy, and evil speech. So it's like we when we moved we brought, so silly, the things that you purge and then the things that you keep. We brought all of these spices with us thinking the Lord would move us quicker than he did. So a boxes of spices went with us many places. And by the time we got the spices out, they were bad. And yet I still, I didn't inspect them. So they went right into my spice cabinet. So I think I have these spices available to me oh, that are good, and I go to take them out, and they're solid. Like, you can't even shake them apart. They have completely become one solid mass and are not able to be used. So I want you to think of First Peter 2, 1 like that. Like, you have spices that are just sitting around, uh, maybe the, the way you show jealousy, the way um, you judge another um, the way you twist a truth, the way you talk about people, even people that are doing evil does not allow us to participate in evil speech. And you can study that out. We're not going to go further into that. But when he shows you these things, you need to get them out. When you notice it's a solid, useless block that does nothing but harm or take up space or resurrect the flesh that has died, then why keep it? Get rid of it. Just like that chunky old spice that went right into the trash. I didn't keep it just in case it got better um, or um, in case someone hurt me. You know what I mean? If you're keeping uh, certain things that he says to get rid of, why? Why did I keep those spices? I don't know. I should have donated them. Then somebody could have actually used them. So how? How do we get, okay, we know how to get rid of spices in our cabinet, hello, into the trash. But how do we get rid of these things in our life? Because it can feel like I know I'm saved, I'm brand new, I'm so thankful, and then uh, we're jealous or we're, we lie and all of a sudden we're like, oh, I'm not saved. I'm not, well, no, you are. That's why he tells you to get rid of it, is there's a process of growing in your salvation, which we have talked about before, right? Craving the milk of the word is is after 1 Peter 2, 1. That's what follows it. Crave the milk of the word. Well, how do you do that? Because you don't just wake up one day and be like, I cannot get enough of my Bible. I just cannot. You have to choose to go there first. My husband likens it to, you won't crave something you've never tasted. So the goodness of the Lord is sweet. 
I know Jewish children, when they are read the word, uh, very young, they put honey on their tongue so that they recognize that the word is sweet, that it is good, and it is good for consuming. How cool is that? So how do we get rid of these things? We're going to go to Galatians 5.16. Let's find out. Let's actually find out how do we get rid of this junk a hunk, a hunk of junk, right? How do we get rid of the things that the rest of the world struggles with, but in Christ we don't have to, and yet we find ourselves still dealing with lying, hypocrisy, jealousy, uh, evil speech, inappropriate um, manners of joking. Why? Why is it still there? Well, first, Paul shines a light on it and says it doesn't belong there. That's not part of the new life. Okay, that's the first thing. You've got to identify it. Second, Galatians 5.16, so I advise you to live according to your new life in the Holy Spirit. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Hello. Okay, but I know a lot of you are like, oh, that's great, but how do I live in the Holy Spirit. How do you? You live in the Holy Spirit by surrendering to him, by having conversation with heaven, by acknowledging that you are new and you have a new covering. You have been given an armor that holds in the Holy Spirit that's been given you to lead you into all truth. The Bible says, be being filled. Let me pull that up. What does that mean? We've been given the Holy Spirit. Well, we're pouring in by stirring up the Holy Spirit in us, be being filled. That means we're accessing what he has for us rather than the things of the flesh constantly. And he puts it on like, this is a great book. The coat my father gave me. It's a mini book. I would encourage you to get it. It's by Rodney Howard Brown. You and your kids can read it. My kids have read it. In fact, they'll read it again. Um, But I was just, I was sitting down this morning. The Lord was like, I want you just to read one part out of that, just to encourage people. So here it is. Today, I will wear the coat. What's the coat? The coat my father gave me. He gave us his anointing. He's anointed us. You know, you follow throughout the Old Testament, the coat was a sort of anointing. Well, the father's given us his coat today. Today I will tell I will tell you this. Scripture is fulfilled. Today you I can go free. Today I have no more bondage. Today I can be healed. Today my marriage can be healed. Today I can have peace of mind. Today I can re- be set free from lies of the devil or the carnal nature. Today not because of me, but because of the coat my father gave me. How's that coat in our life now? It's the Holy Spirit. I could keep reading that, but I'm not going to. I clicked again for those of you taking count. I do this. I'm learning not to, okay? Ephesians 3.19, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. How do you know his love? You stir yourself up in it. You get in the word. You get a scripture that says, I will live in the Holy Spirit and I won't crave anything from the sinful nature. And you rejoice in that. Thank you, Lord, that you've taken it away, that the sin nature is no longer a part of me. And I live by your spirit. Ephesians 5.18, and do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. There it is again, filled. Well, we have the Holy Spirit. So what does he mean? He means turning our focus that our flesh may be filled to overflowing by his spirit, by confessing his word, by worshiping, by being led and guided by him, by just surrendering to him to let his cravings be our cravings. You're just like, Father, I love you. I worship you and I adore you. I thank you that you fill me to overflowing with your spirit. And you start speaking it out your mouth. If you've followed us for any time, you know the power of your mouth. Your children should know the power of their mouth. They should know the power of discerning that the carnal nature is rising up. I will be filled with the Holy Spirit. I will be being filled. That's a continual thing that I will not fill my cup with flesh or carnal. I will be being filled with the Holy Spirit who will continue to grow me, expand me, stretch me, bring me into the things that God has for me today that I don't have to wait. All right. Acts 2, 4. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right. First Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not quench the Spirit. What's that mean? That means, you know, you have um, 
the fire of the Holy Spirit filling you to overflowing, filling, filling, filling. And then you just carnal nature it like a wet blanket. That's squelching the Holy Spirit. Like, oh, that's uh, undignified. Oh, I'm going to be in control here. That's the flesh nature. That's the carnal nature to want to lord over itself instead of let the burning of the Holy Spirit, the spirit that's been given to us by the Father, lead us and guide us and fill us to overflowing that we live a life so different than the things that we read that Paul told us to get rid of. We live a life so different because we're be being filled. It's by the Spirit that we do any of it. So again, our scripture for today, 516. If you're going to talk to your kids about these things, if they're struggling with lying, hypocrisy, jealousy, and evil speech, you find a word from the Lord, from the Bible, that addresses that thing. And then you take them over to 516 and you teach them to raise up their hands and ask the Father to help and fill them with his spirit over and over again that we may recognize him as Lord and not our sinful nature, not our carnal nature. And you change the way you're doing things. You remove yourself from the seat of lordship and say, no, I'm not lying. I am not craving sinful things. I am not going to be jealous. I refuse it. I am burning it out with the fire of the Holy Spirit. I will be stirred up because today the Spirit has come because the Word has been fulfilled by Christ Jesus. And that Spirit burns His life in me. That Spirit encourages me, gives me uh, words to speak when my mind doesn't have them, gives me prayers to pray when I don't understand what to pray because it's straight from the Father. He's given us his spirit so that we can, by the spirit, not fulfill the desires of the flesh and not only not fulfill them, no longer crave them. Because now you've had a taste of the goodness of God. You want more of him. You want more of his fire. You want more of his presence in your life. You want more of his promise in your marriage. You want more of his goodness in your family. You want everything that the Father has given you that is yes and amen, and you begin to crave those spiritual things. So First Peter touches on crave the milk of the word. Crave the Spirit of God that 516 says, so that we won't be doing what the sinful nature craves. Isn't that exciting? We can stir ourselves up and teach our kids to do the same, and if they can't do it yet, you help them be stirred up. You help stir them up. You help them find that scripture. You help them say that scripture and then thank the Lord that that scripture is true for them and that the Holy Spirit will fill them to overflowing with the truth of that scripture so that their carnal nature will no longer lead and rule and reign them. Thank you, Lord. Goodbye, gross, carnal, sinful, justifying of the flesh nature. Goodbye. We are going to move forward by the Spirit of God. Father, I thank you that every ear that hears is being stirred up right now by your Spirit, that they are be being filled as they go throughout their day. Their attention is turned to you. They will not allow the carnal nature to be depressed from jealousy or angry that leads to lying. They will not give in to those ingredients that no longer belong to them, but they will be filled with your Spirit They will turn their attention to your word where the Holy Spirit brings it to pass in their lives. They will be being filled by worshiping you, Lord, in every situation, giving you thanks, turning their attention and then the direction of what they'll do completely over to you, that your spirit may lead and guide them as they live and move and have their being in you. Let everyone in their home do the same. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this podcast with others. If it is blessing you, let's stir up moms all over this world for who they are in Christ and the glorious mandate we've been given as mothers to raise up our kids for eternal destinies, not just earthly ones. Be blessed. Until the next scene. Bye-bye.